Hi, my name's Kat and you're watching Kat Rose Astrology. And today I thought I'd share some musings that I have on how I prepare for a birth chart reading. So as you know, I'm a practicing astrologer. I'm seeing clients every day. And for most of you who are already studying astrology and you know are wondering about how does an astrologer actually prepare for a reading, everyone does this differently, I'm sure. But what I, what I personally never heard when I was studying astrology was like, how, how do you begin to approach reading for somebody else. You might know everything that you feel like you need to know in terms of the planet, signs, aspects, all of the things, what do they actually mean? But when it comes to actually sitting down with somebody for an hour, an hour and a half, what does that look like? How do you prepare for a birth chart reading? And that's what I'm going to share with you today. Again, this is just, this is my own approach. Everyone's going to do this differently, but I thought just to be um, helpful to those who are maybe starting to do readings for different clients, or if you're on the fence about reading for clients and you, you, you don't really know if you feel ready or not yet, hopefully this will be like a helpful push that, that, that you might need. Because if I can do it, I'm sure you can do it as well. All right. So let's start at the beginning, which is a very obvious thing. I get the client's data. So uh, this is kind of obvious, but I wanted to start with this because I wanted to share a little bit with you about how I book readings or how I receive readings. Um, to begin with, I use a booking system uh, and that is called a pointlet. Um, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I'm just sharing. This is what I use. I have looked at others. I've looked at Acuity, which is another option, or Calendly is another. Um, after a lot of research, I'm happy with a pointlet. It's my choice. So anyway, I've set up different types of reading, the kind that you'll see on my website. So everything from the complete birth chart reading, advanced readings, diamond readings, and more. Um, which a client can, can book through my website, capriceastrology.com. And this is also hooked up to my Google Calendar. So when a client clicks book appointment, they'll be able to choose a date and a time. I think that's really important because that saves email back and forth. I know a lot of astrologers do it the old school way and, you know, say, just email me and we'll, we'll, we'll figure out a time. It's like, no, I don't want to be dealing with back and forth email ping pong to, to do this. This way I can set my calendar my calendar for available days and times that I'm free and a client can pick a time that hopefully is convenient for them. It's difficult dealing with different time zones, but um, you do your best. It also takes payment, so I don't need to chase anyone uh, like after the reading. I don't recommend that. I recommend letting people have the option to pay you up front um, and most of these um, booking platforms can also take payments and are like hooked up to your, your accounts. Um, and finally, this platform also takes the client's data. So as you probably already know, what you need for an astrology reading is the date of birth, the time of birth, and the place of birth. So I will ask those questions. And then finally, I will ask for more context. I'll ask, you know, what do you want to get out of this reading today? I can't remember how I word it exactly, but I want to give people options to select different topics um, or share any context that they need, uh, ask any specific questions that they have right now. And the reason I do this is because reading for somebody without any context is generally never going to be the best reading that an astrologer can give or that a client can receive. It can end up feeling like you're trying to impress a client when you don't have any context. It's like, I, I guess I'm just going to tell you about something that maybe an astrologer has already told you about. It's, it's a, like a blaring thing in your chart. Um, you know, and, and we're not, we're not magicians with the role of an astrologer isn't to impress you with their, um, amazing knowledge of your past or anything. It's to provide answers based on astrology. And I find that letting people give me a little bit of context as to what, what, what they're thinking about right now, what issues are currently, um, affecting them in their life just makes for a way better, more efficient reading for everyone. So yeah, that's one thing. Um, the next thing I do is I will enter the client's data into my astrology program. And you might, you've seen me use this before, but I use Astro Gold. Astro Gold is the best program I know of for Mac users. Yeah, I find that um, that's arguably the best option, particularly for Mac users, but even for some PC users, uh, unless you're really keen to get all of the bells and whistles that you would do with Solar Fire, um, I think Astro Gold is perfect for most um, starting out astrologers and even more advanced astrologers. Uh, plus, it's a hell of a lot cheaper. Solar Fire, I believe, is $360 and um, Astro Gold at the moment is $230. Again, no affiliation with these people, though I 
be open to it. I also find that the interface on Astro Gold is a lot friendlier and just nicer to look at. So even with all, if it's flaws, because there will be flaws with all of them, as a Mac user, you kind of have to go with Astro Gold, in my opinion, um, because Solar Fire is at this time of recording is not available on on Mac. All right, so now that I've kind of done the the boring bits, I've got the bookings come through. Um, I've pulled up the client's birth chart. Um, my first thing is just getting first impressions. So this kind of happens naturally. I can't look at a chart without you know seeing like certain things will will jump out, um, and I kind of just let my eyes do a lot of the groundwork by getting accustomed to the chart. Um, feeling intuitively into what areas of the chart are drawing me in. This will naturally be things like stelliums. So three or more planets in a particular sign. I'll look at the rising sign, the Lord of the rising sign. I'll look at the sun and the moon, as well as the moon phase. Not everyone like is so obsessed with moon phases, but I am. And I'll look at any kind of overabundance of elements so fire, air, earth, and water, as well as the modes, cardinal, mutable, and uh, fixed. So once I've kind of got some like general, all right, that's what's calling out here, uh, then I'll start thinking about transits. So now I have a general idea at all times, roughly where the planets are in the sky. Um, this is something that anyone can learn with just a bit of practice. You don't have to be studying a chart every day. At some point, you'll just kind of roughly know where things are. And let me know if you'd like me to do a video on how I learned to do that. Um, I also want to pay attention to what transiting planets are going to be impacting a client's chart. So to spell that out, what planets in the current sky will be interacting with planets in the person's birth chart, in particular eclipses. So I'll always bring this up in a reading because they're happening in all of our charts somewhere and they usually speak fairly loudly. So where are those eclipses happening? Where are Saturn and Jupiter in their chart? So I'll probably bring up those two planets. And I will talk about outer planets, but only if they are um, quite, quite, to quite tightly in aspect to or conjunct natal planets. So usually within about three degrees, I'm going to start talking about the outer planets. Again, everyone's going to put different emphasis on different places, but this is what I find to be most helpful. Uranus oppositions tend to be common with a big chunk of clients because you know, basically, if you're in your kind of early 40s, you're probably going through a Uranus opposition. Um, so I'm going to be talking about that with a lot of them. Planetary returns. It's always fun to talk about a Saturn return, first or second. I've never had a third one yet, but I uh, was still waiting on that. And are there lots, are there lots of fortune and a lot of diamond being activated by an eclipse or um, an, like a, a, a transit from Jupiter or Saturn? Um, or have they been activated recently? Will they be activated um, soon? And I will double check, check that the sun, moon, and ascendant and ascendant ruler are not, or you know, if they are being affected by any current transiting planets, um, I'll, I'll make a note of that as well. Then I'm going to check for the specific asks or comments context um, that the client has given me. So I'll go back to the original booking form and just make sure that I'm going to be able to address all of those questions or comments. Most common things that I get, and just to share this out of interest, usually people ask about strengths and weaknesses, what I should be doing, like what am I doing with my life and what should I be doing? Career, creativity, I get a lot of that because I don't know, maybe people are attracted to the 10th house of sun on some level and they want to talk about career stuff. Relationships, and less frequently, but I'll still get questions about home, family, and health. Different astrologers, interestingly, will get different um, topics come up more. Um, some clients will be asking more about spirituality or, you know, other uh, astrologers focus on um, like relocation stuff. So people specialize in different things, but I certainly get a lot of people who are creatives, fellow healers, or um, also entrepreneurs, people who really want to pursue the path of their diamond. So that uh, tends to be people who like to get readings with me. In increasingly though, I'm getting a lot of relationship questions uh, and I'm actually really enjoying that. So I might want to specialize a bit more in that because um, it's never been something that I felt very uh, apt to be able to do just in, in general life, like clueless about relationships. But when it comes to astrology, I feel like it's, it's a different matter and it's actually a really fun and interesting thing to talk about. And I think useful, um, really useful, astrology is really useful for discussing relationships. I'll look at the houses that relate to those topics that they've asked about. I'll also look at any planets that universally like signify those topics. 
And just generally, I'll, I'll look at um, past transits if they've had anything recently that might have been bringing up that topic more. Finally, and I'll just throw this in most of the time, I'll just check if there are any fixed stars or asteroids like conjunct, like tightly conjunct any natal um, planets or points. Uh, that, that's kind of like a like a cherry on top. I don't always bring that up, but if there's something useful kind of like screaming out, like, ah, there's Aldebaran, like I'll, I'll bring it in um, and, it, you know, if, if and when it's relevant. So then I'll go back over my notes and because at this point I've only got kind of like bullet points, but I'll be able to elaborate if I need to, any phrases that come to mind that I want to be able to share with the client. And finally, for an advanced reading, this, this is a different kind of reading, I'll look at, I'll really focus on predictive techniques. So things like I'll look at annual perfections, I'll look at zodiacal releasing and secondary, the secondary progressed moon in particular, um, and see if there's anything there that, that needs to be spoken about. If I'm really stuck on any aspect of the client's chart, I'll often one, look at my books. I'll refer to some of these lovely books behind me. Um, you know, some of them, they might spark an idea that I haven't thought of. Um, I'm becoming less reliant on looking at books, but I definitely, when I first started giving readings, I would like get all of the books out and, and make sure, like check what I was saying wasn't total bullshit that some astrologer had backed it up at some point. But also, you know, be discriminating with the kinds of books or astrologers that you're referring to. Um, make sure that you actually resonate with what they're saying. If you feel kind of like, eh, is that true? Then then ignore it. It might be true for them. It might be true for another astrologer. But if it's not true for you, don't, don't blag it, basically. Um, I will share some of my favorite astrology books at some point as well. Hopefully that will be useful. And then the other thing I'll do if I'm really stuck is I'll pull a tarot card. And again, this, this kind of comes in waves. Sometimes I'll do it a lot more than other times. But the tarot is a really amazing kind of a phone a friend option. So if I'm feeling stuck, um, I really love reaching for the tarot, you know, for answering a particular question about a client's chart or just even a more general thing, like what, what's the most important thing that, that needs to be said right now? And almost always it will speak mountains to the client um, if and when I bring it up. Sometimes it will just be something that is for me and I'll keep to, my, to myself in the back of my mind. And sometimes I'll share the card with the, the client. Um, and, you know, again, it's it's a very intuitive thing. This is not a science. It's a, it's a language. It's an art. Um, and other astrologers use different kind of phone a friend options. I know astrologers who use human design as a backup, the Ching, runes, their own spirit guides. You know, everything goes if it feels like it's true and it needs to be said. So just to wrap up, this is what I do just before I hop on Zoom. I use Zoom to host my, my readings uh, like the rest of the world at this point. So about five, 10 minutes before I'll, you know, go to the toilet, do the obvious things. Um, I'll make sure that I'm presentable. Um, I know that it's Zoom, but I never really got behind the whole pajama bottoms, nice top, because uh, I still just feel like like the client might know on some level. I remember, um, I think it was Sam Reynolds who was going to give a talk on, on Zoom. So it's an online talk. And he was like, hang on, I need to go change my shoes or something because like I need to feel like I'm in, in work mode, basically. So do what you need to do to kind of feel ready and presentable. Get some water. It gets thirsty reading for people. I'll light a candle. Um, that's kind of my way of inviting in my diamond spirit, um, just divinity into the conversation um, and just kind of setting the space. Um, people could have much more elaborate rituals, I'm sure, but a candle seems to do it for me. And it's just a reminder that this is a, a sacred thing that's happening and, and the thing that I'm really blessed to be able to do. Uh, then just maybe two minutes before I'll say a little prayer, something like, please help this reading flow. Please help the client get everything they need right now. Um, please help me express your message fluently. And by your, I mean like spirit, God. Um, and please let us have a, a good time because no one wants to have like a, just a shit. Time. Even if you're talking about deep light or heavy stuff, I still want my client to have a good experience, a positive, uplifting experience. Um, but that's just my sad moon speaking. Uh, and then it's showtime and, and that, you know, we, we go to it. So that's it. I, I, I felt like I should share that because again, this is something that I always wanted to know, like how do different astrologers do their thing? How do they get ready? Um, so I hope that was helpful. I'll probably, you know, update it in a year or two, who knows? 
But uh, if this was interesting or helpful to you, um, please click like, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to see what this is like in, in action, we'll book a reading with me. Go to catroseastrology.com and you'll see the options there. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>